consider a linear transformation from two-dimensional plane to the two-dimensional plane. For instance, right now I have the two-dimensional plane and I specified the one basis vector 1, 0 and the second basis vector 0, 1. And then if I apply a transformation, then everything moves around and transforms to new locations. The red vector has gone to 2, 1 and the yellow to minus 1, 1. Now, the magical part about a linear transformation is that because any vector could be written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, it meant that to figure out what the linear transformation did anything, you just needed to know where the two standard basis vectors went. So what we effectively do is we take them and we combine them into a single matrix that encapsulates the four numbers that matter for this transformation from two-dimensional space to two-dimensional space. Indeed, if I define my transformation to be the transformation where it just takes a vector x and multiplies it by this matrix, this tells me where every single vector goes. Indeed, we just define this matrix vector product so that this notion made sense. Now, the question for this video is this. Can I reverse the process? Can I invert it such that wherever this transformation has gone to, I have a new transformation that undoes it and puts all of the vectors back to where they began. For example, if I made the one animation, I can just reverse the animation and my vectors get back to where they began. That is, I'm looking for some new transformation, a transformation that I will call S of X. I'm hoping that that transformation will be a linear transformation. I'm hoping that I can figure out what the coefficients are for that particular linear transformation. But if I can do that, then my T transformation may skew everything and move the vectors around, but that my S transformation moves everything back and all the vectors end up exactly where they began. Let's see one more example. In this transformation, what I'm doing is I am rotating by pi over three in the clockwise. I have my rotation matrix and I plugged in negative pi over three because rotation matrices were defined for counterclockwise rotation. If I've rotated every vector pi over 3 clockwise, then I'll just rotate back. I'll just rotate it back counterclockwise by pi over 3, and I get the same sort of rotation matrix, but the negative signs have now gone away. Well then, let me ask this. Is every transformation invertible? I mean, it seems from what I'm doing that if I just make a transformation, then I just play whatever animation I constructed in reverse, and that puts everything back to the beginning. Well, maybe so, but consider this. This is going to be a new transformation. I've just put in some random vector there. This is the transformation with the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0. And what it does is vertical projection. It takes everything, the entire plane, and it just collapses it straight down vertically onto the x-axis. It's vertical projection. And then what the end result of this is all the vectors have to lie down on the x-axis. There's, there's no more grid lines because everything's being compressed down. Okay, well... Can I invert this particular one? You might be still thinking, well, yes, Trevor, just play your animation in reverse. Set your time parameter to negative time. Okay, but then let me give you this example. This is the same transformation. I haven't changed that. All I've done is I've drawn more of these green arrows. And so if I do my vertical projection onto the x-axis, you notice that all these green arrows collapse and they end up on the same spot. Well, I can't reverse this by a transformation. A transformation is just a function. And what that means is that if you have an input value, I have to tell you where that input value goes. But for the reversing transformation, for the inverting transformation, if it existed, where would this green arrow go? We've seen that all sorts of different green arrows all end up collapsing down here to this single one in the output. So if I reverse the process, and I want to send this output green vector back to where it began, I don't know which of the ones to send it to. It's overprescribed, or in other words, it is not one-to-one, -one, where what one-to-one -one meant was that if the transformation took two different things and they were equal, then those ostensibly different things had to be the same, that you don't have any collapsing going on. And then the reason why this prevents it inverting is that to be a transformation, one vector has to go to one place. One vector can't go to multiple places. The analog, by the way, from sort of high school or calculus is that you have to pass a vertical line test if you graph a function. One input can't go to multiple different points on the graph of a real variable function. The same is true here, is that if I input one vector into our machine, if I hope there's some matrix that represents it, only one vector comes out. But to invert this, it's impossible when it's one-to-one. 
Let's look at one more example just for fun. I like this one a lot. So this one is a different transformation. It's now 1, 0, 1, 0 as our matrix. And I've graphed, again, a whole bunch of different green arrows, and watch what happens. Well, it's a pretty cool transformation, but notice how all of those green arrows end up in the same spot again. So it's also not one-to-one. -one. Uh, all the different green arrows ended up collapsed into one. If I want to reverse it that one, I don't have a unique spot to be able to send it. So in other words, I cannot invert this green arrow. So this would give us some intuition that, yes, some transformations can be inverted and that I can reset them to their original state and that the thing that resets them, the inverse transformation, is really a transformation. It obeys the properties of being a transformation. But sometimes, if not one-to-one, -one, then it cannot possibly be invertible. All right, next up, our formal definition. So this is what we're going to define to be a linear transformation. I've got a T transformation from Rn to Rn. And the claim is that transformation is invertible if there's some other transformation that I call S, also from Rn to Rn. They need to be from Rn to Rn in both cases so that the dimensions match, so that it makes sense in both directions. But if you have this, then the claim of being invertible is that if you can compose them in either way, S of T of X or T of S of X, either way you get back to the identity. So for example, if I have some transformation here and I go out along T and my transformation does whatever it does, then I can go back along the S transformation and I get back to where I began. Or I can go out along the S first and then back along the T and I again get back to exactly where I began. Okay, so that's our definition of an invertible transformation. How, how do we get this one-to-one -one property back into it? So I'll begin by saying I've got an X1 and an X2 and the, the transformation takes into the same spot. So in the example we've seen, we had all these different green arrows, and if I apply my transformation, they all collapse down to the same spot. The T of them is all the same. Okay, so now let me apply an inverse transformation if it exists. Let me imagine that there's some S and I'm going to apply that. Well, what happens? S of T of X1 is just X1. And then S of T of X2 is just X2. That's what it means to be an invertible transformation. So if S indeed was the inverse, what you get was that X1 is equal to X2. But in our example, the, all the x1 and x2 and x3 and x4 and x5, all of those were different. So indeed, it's not possible to have such an invertible transformation. That is, invertible transformations are all one-to-one. -one. You cannot have it be invertible if you've got a situation where two different vectors collapse down onto the same vector. All right, so where are we going with this? Uh, we've just studied geometrically the idea of invertible transformations. But previously, we've seen what it meant to have an invertible matrix. An invertible matrix is an algebraic story, and here I'm telling a geometric story. So in the next video, I want to combine these two stories, and indeed, we're going to see that invertible matrices correspond to invertible transformations.